I'm going to do a little dry run to show how I plan on testing these meters. This is a model uh, DM301. This is the meter we're going to be testing. See this meter doesn't have a cat rating. I have very low confidence that it's going to survive these tests. It's a good place to start just for uh, showing how to run the test. Let's get started. There's four steps I plan on doing. The first would be to functionally test the meter if they pass. The next thing I plan on doing is removing any fuses that are in line with the current. This meter happens to have an unfused current sense. And the reason I want to test these without the fuses is I'm, I'm assuming that the fuse is actually going to burn open. Once the fuse opens, if it arcs over, the meter is going to fail anyway. And I plan on saving the fuse for the final test. Next I'll run the surge test on all combinations of the three leads. This transient is going to be positive and negative. So the wires here will have to be inverted. The transient generator I built will only output a positive pulse. Once those tests are performed, I'll go back and refunctional test the meter and see if it still works. If the meter does, I'm going to consider it a pass and I'll save it for later testing. So a couple of things I'd like to mention about the specifications. I'll just read what it states here. If control of transient over voltage is employed in the measuring circuit used to measure mains, any over voltage limiting component or circuit shall have adequate strength to limit the likely transient over voltages in normal use. Conformity is checked by applying five positive and five negative impulses with applicable impulse withstand voltage of table 102, spaced up to one minute apart from a hybrid impulse generator CIEC 61180-1. So if you're interested in building your own generator, I would suggest IEC 611 80-1. <laughs> so we've already talked in the first video about the transients um, that explain a little bit about this generator. Again I'm putting out lower power than what they, the meters would actually be normally tested to. I'm just trying to weed out any meters that uh, may not even come close to meeting their rated specifications. Again my plan is to actually test them for CAT2 standards not CAT3. So the specification goes on to state, the test voltage is applied between each pair of terminals used to measure mains where the voltage limiting devices are present. Note, this test can be extremely hazardous. Explosion shields and other provisions can be used to protect personnel performing the tests. No hazard shall arise due to the operation of the over voltage limiting component. Component shall not rupture and shall operate as intended during the test. Uh, these meters will be powered, the battery will be in place at the time I'm running the transients. So as I'm going through these tests, if the meter stops functioning, I would consider that a failure. Actually, I would consider anything as an arc would be a failure. <clears throat> the real specification of the transient is riding on top of the AC line voltage. Uh, so any kind of an arc over inside of the meter obviously could be a very bad thing. Uh, so I would say at this test, any kind of an arcing that occurs I'm going to consider that a failure. So let's just go ahead and hook this meter up. We're going to start in DC volts mode. We'll go to a thousand volts. And I'm using my oscilloscope for now to monitor the output of the generator. And I'm just going to turn around. So there's one. two and we'll just go ahead and change the mode so let's try it in uh, AC mode we'll set it at 750 so I'm watching the scope here the transients look fine Wouldn't recommend this, but I'm just going to change this. <laughs> so let's try it on the uh, resistance measurement. I'll try uh, 200 ohms. And you kind of wonder, uh, this is a very low cost meter. Again, it's probably uh, I don't know, It's it's got to be 20 years old. And uh, I'm going to be amazed here if this meter actually passes this because it's not rated for any CAT standard at all. 
it'd be funny if this uh, turns out to be the the meter of choice <laughs> let's just try her in the Try in diode mode. Let's try it in current mode. I can see from the uh, waveform here, it's uh, definitely limiting the uh, the transient quite a bit. This is a uh, 200 microamp mode here. So, we've run all those, the next thing I do is invert the polarity of these. And we just run back through the same test. What I'd like to do now is go between the volts and the amps mode. And that's about it. So I think what we'll do here, just for fun, see if we can uh, measure anything in uh, ohms mode. Nah. Yeah, I'm half tempted to put a battery into this thing and uh, calibrate it. It actually looks like it's still working. <laughs> I mean you saw what those transients did to that uh, B and K meter and uh, I assume if you watch that first video 
You probably saw what that did to the fluke. Nah, yeah, no change. <laughs> I think we'll put a new battery in this thing and check it out for real. <laughs> so, so there you go. A very cheap meter uh, survived a whole lot better than my uh, old antique fluke did. And uh, it certainly survived better than my B&K meter, which cost about 80 bucks. I don't want to talk about what that fluke cost when I got it. But uh, this thing here, this is like dime store stuff. <laughs> so, there you go. I just put a brand new battery into this. And uh, as you can see now in volts, it goes back to zero. You can also see now the decimal place is working in the DC volts. I'm just taking my Harbor Freight meter. This is the P37772. I had uh, ran this meter previously through some high voltage tests. So I'm just comparing the two in volts mode. Again, uh, it definitely appears that uh, there's no real issue. Yeah, see, no problem at all with this meter. At least in volts mode, everything appears fine. Let's see, uh, it's on 2K, this is a 1K ohm resistor. So fairly close. It's uh, 20K, so I don't have a, uh, this is a 10K ohm resistor. Two hundred K ohm. It's a hundred K resistor here. Yeah, so uh, this meter is actually uh, basically it survived these tests. <laughs> so this is what I'm looking for. This meter again, it isn't even cat rated and survived. So uh, yeah, <laughs> this test has actually restored my faith in uh, low cost meters. I never expected this thing uh, not to uh, get damaged by this. You have an idea now how I plan on running these tests, what I'm considering to pass fail. Uh, next step will be to actually order up some meters and start running them. So uh, hopefully over the next uh, maybe month or so I'll, I'll get some on order and we can start playing around with them.